is on the south the western corner of the Sea of Galilee. Jesus sent them in the boat to the northeast corner to Bethsaida. Uh, the other people went afterward, tried to find Jesus at Capernaum, if you, if you read the story. And then after being, as uh, Mary Ann said, uh, he, they immediately were where they were going. They then turned around and came back down and to Gennesaret. So if you look and read the story, you hear all these different places. This is what they started. They, the feeding of the 5,000 was here. They headed across the water. He was on a mountain here watching them go across. They went to Bethsaida. They looked for them at Capernaum. They went then to Gennesaret. So two questions. One is, why did Jesus walk on the water? <laughs> After all, this is not any like any of the other miracles that he had done. He had healed people who were sick and needed help. He had fed people who needed help. Uh, he had cast out demons. But walking in the water doesn't help anybody solve any human need. So what was he doing? Mark says twice in Mark 6.52 and then again in Mark 8. Mark 8 says, they didn't understand the miracle of the feeding of the 5,000. And he repeats it. And as a matter of fact, it was, so, it was so unclear to them that if you see in the beginning of Mark 8, that Jesus did the same miracle over again with 4,000 people and seven loaves. Uh, so they were supposed to get something that they didn't understand. What was it they were supposed to understand? They were supposed to understand that Jesus was the Messiah, the Son of God. And why was feeding them the, the food like that? It was because Moses... And the power of God, when they left Egypt, they were fed with manna in the wilderness. So John 6 talks about this. The bread that Jesus gave them was like the bread of heaven, like the manna. They were supposed to realize that Deuteronomy 18, 18, and 19, uh, God told Moses, I'm going to bring, an, bring a, another prophet just like you. And when he comes, every, the people must do everything that he says. And that's Jesus. Jesus is the prophet like Moses. How did you know he's like Moses? He did the same miracle, <laughs> kinds of miracles that Moses did, particularly the manna. They didn't get it. They didn't understand it. And, and Mark says twice, they didn't understand it. So Jesus did a very special miracle, walking on the water for his disciples so that they would get the message. And notice he did it at night, so people from the shore couldn't see what was going on. Only his disciples saw this miracle. And he knew very well what was going to happen, didn't he? <laughs> he sent them off in the boat. He went up on the, uh, the mountain to pray. But he was watching them, Mark says. And he waited, and then he came walking across the surface of the water to them. And what was he demonstrating? He was demonstrating there is a, a, a reality, a real world, which is more powerful and more real than our own physical world, that it's the spiritual world. And Peter needed to know that. All the disciples needed to know that. We all need to know. That's what faith is. Faith is two, is two things. It's one, it's understanding the reality of God's spiritual world. It's our real world. It's not a state of mind. It's real. It's more real than the world we live in. The world we live in was made by the power of this unseen real world, even more real world. And secondly, relying on it. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen, but it's a combination. You must see spiritual realities, God's spiritual realities, and rely on them. Don't just see them. That's what the devils do and, and tremble. See them and rely on them. That's the combination. That's what faith is. And the disciples had to learn that if they were going to live by faith. And so they had to realize that Jesus was here to demonstrate that the spiritual world is active. It's in and around our world right now. And God can do things in, in our world that seem impossible in our world because he's part of the spiritual world. And he, that's why... Uh, uh, when he turned the water into mine, he says he manifested his glory. He demonstrated the reality of the spiritual world in the natural world. And that's what 
Peter and the others saw when he came walking on the water. Remember their reaction was, truly, you are the Son of God. They finally got the point. And you remember, just after this, is in, that's in um, Matthew 14. In Matthew 16, Peter says, you know, flesh and blood hasn't revealed to you, but you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And in Mark 8, the same thing happens. So immediately after this, God is telling them the important core truth of the reality that Jesus is the Son of God. He is God the Son. And he's demonstrating this in this very unusual miracle, not just to uh, surprise them uh, and to trick them, but to let them know there is a greater reality and you're living in it. And so he walked on the water to demonstrate that. Now, the second question is, why did Peter walk in the water? Peter didn't walk in the water to demonstrate that Peter was God. <laughs> he isn't God. But Peter caught something immediately. He realized that Jesus was showing him that he's God so that we, Peter and people, everyone like, could do the works of God in the power of God. So notice carefully what Peter did. He looked out and said, Lord, if it's you, as Mary had said, he clearly knew it was, but it's just confirming that. Command me to come to you. He didn't say, wow, I want to do that too. That looks like fun. Won't that make a neat story for my grandkids? He says, command me. And that's how the principle of faith works. You first find out what God's will is, and when that God is directing you to do something in his will, and then you do it. So command me. If you tell me to come, I know it's your will, and I can walk on the water. And he did. And that's the way the, the principle of faith always works. And in the notes, I gave you an example from James 5, verses 16 through 18, is another extended explanation of the prayer of faith. And it gives the example of Elijah. And we studied about Elijah uh, some time back. Uh, and James goes out of his way. It says, Elijah was a man with a nature just like ours. Elijah wasn't a super saint, so wasn't someone special. He was just like ours. But he prayed, and it didn't rain for three and a half years. And he prayed again, and it started raining. Now, how does that illustrate the prayer of faith? Because if you go back to 1 Kings chapter 17 and 18, the story about Elijah, you discover that on Mount Carmel, uh, Elijah said, Lord, let these people know that I have done everything according to your word. You told me what to do. And 1 Kings 18.1 says, God says to, to uh, Elijah, Go and tell Ahab, I am going to send rain. And then Elijah famously goes up and prays for rain several times before it finally starts to rain. How did he know to pray for rain? God had told him, I am going to send rain. And James says, that's how it works. That is how it has always worked. This principle is throughout Scripture. Find out God's will, and then you can do it. <coughs> No matter how impossible it seems, those kids are unruly, the principal won't listen to you, you, you have too many other responsibilities to keep it up. If, if this is God's will for you, you can do it. And as Marianne said, sometimes you'll look at the waves and you'll begin to sink. I've always thought it was kind of funny that you begin to sink. How quickly do you sink in water. You don't begin to sink, you sink. You know? But he began to sink in the water, and he immediately said, Lord, help me. Exactly the right thing to do. When your faith falters, the answer isn't God's given up on me. It's the answer is you focus his law. You've lost your focus. Turn to God, and God will immediately restore you. He puts out his hands. He's come back in the walker, water. They walk in the boat, and God takes them to the, to the shore, and they go on. So the, the disciples have seen, and they said, surely you are the Son of God. Uh, and what comes to mind, to my mind in all this, is Proverbs 24, 16. A righteous man falls seven times, <laughs> but he gets up again. He rises again. Let's do the same thing. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you.